On today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, it is the draft. We take this episode and we break down some of the prospects and we make our predictions where we think these rookies will land in tonight's draft. Enjoy the show. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment where you think someone's going to land. Let's go. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's draft time, baby. Oh, it's draft day. Thursday, April 28th. It has begun. Kevin Costner in the building. Oh, don't bring that up. Draft day has arrived. Don't try and bring me down. Oh, this <laughs> the greatest movie of all time, Mike. I know uh, a feller whose tradition is to watch that movie every draft day. Why would you punish yourself on such a good day? It's the kind of movie in which the love of the draft and of football can provide a rose-colored tint to its contents. Arian Foster's in the movie. Dude, I love it. I love it. See? There's, there's, it's don't just... hear what I'm not saying. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. The general manager is a buffoon and makes deals that would that don't make any sense other than to get fired. But I just love watching NFL things and Kevin Costner. So, like, yeah. just give me happiness, okay? I, just, I haven't seen it since the theater. But I remember leaving going, trying to add up like what the pick swaps that he actually did. And you're like, you just traded yes. you traded away a whole bunch of draft equity for nothing. Yes, and was, you're being celebrated like you won at the end. Nope, it was, like, it was no, absurd. Just like a good fantasy football player. <laughs> we celebrate trading away many draft assets for the one that you know right in front of your face. It's like the, the, uh, the meme where it's... Uh, the, the couple screenshots of the comic of the guy celebrating getting his medal, oh, drinking yeah. the champagne, and then he's bronze. Yes. But he's like, yeah, that's, losers. That's the meme that uh, Al Borland and I used for the pickleball tournament. <laughs> it's very applicable hey, for our bronze medal. You meddled. That's yeah. right. That's what matters. That's right. In fact, meddling qualified us for some sort of special tournament. Ooh. What? Yeah, that's right. All right. <laughs> Welcome into the show. It is draft day. There's a lot going on. We have all of our draft predictions on today's show with stakes. So whoever gets the most wrong will be forced to take a glamour shot and it will be on the back wall. And then we will give it away to some unsuspecting, unlucky soul uh, with an autograph on it. They uh, No, we give it to people who are very suspecting. Like, they expect to get it. That's true. It's not like you. it just shows up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we don't just pick a random house in America That's and right. drop hey, it off. Check your mail. <laughs> it, could, it could be there. Like I said, we'll give it to some very <laughs> suspecting, unlucky individual. Yeah, I mean, yes, they could that be unlucky. Part's, that part's true. That's user choice. We will be live one hour before the draft on Spotify Live, so 7 p.m. Eastern time today. Uh, in fact, we'll be on Spotify Live every week during the season, but this is a special event. Very excited. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. We'll talk. The party room is back. We'll talk oh, with you. Oh, yes. Right now we're talking, you know, you're, you're, you're listening to us and we're talking at you, but we're going to be talking with you uh, tonight. It'll be a good time. Be there. So you can, uh, you can check that out on Spotify Live. If you have the Spotify app, you can listen in there. If you want to participate, grab the Spotify Live app. And this week only, so you've got a few days left, big giveaway on the Ultimate Draft Kit. It fits, right? It's draft week, and we, we've got some promotions going on. We're going to give away a listener league spot. So if you want to play with us, every year we have a very select few that come and play in the listener league with the three of us. It's a, it's a lot of fun. We're giving away a signed Justin Jefferson jersey and a signed Debo Samuel jersey. Uh, all of that is going to be uh, given away to a lucky few people. If you've pre-ordered the Ultimate Draft Kit before May 1st. So get in there right now. You know you're going to get it before draft season, uh, fantasy draft season comes. You can just go to ultimatedraftkit.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else is going on? Did I miss anything very special, Brooksy? Are you excited for the draft? <laughs> it's going to be May. Perfectly executed. <laughs> 
That is not my work. I didn't know that was going to happen. But it seems good. like your work. Oh, man. The deucers. So it is going to be. Make it uh, happen. It is going to be May. Love that, it. That's coming up. <laughs> uh, quick question for you before we get into the news, and then we're going to predict every uh, relevant, what we deem to be potentially fantasy relevant rookie, where they're going to go. Uh, that's coming up momentarily. But we just talked about the top 12 quarterbacks. And we counted it down, our consensus top 12. Right. There's a lot of quarterbacks that didn't make that list. So this could be framed any way you want. It could be late round. It could be sleeper. But what is one of the favorite quarterbacks right now in your mind that you would be targeting that's outside that top 12? Uh, I'll jump in here. Uh, Brooksy, go to, go to my camera, please. Go to my – come on. <laughs> come on. Is this – is this a question that we're asking the fantasy hitman which quarterback that we didn't talk about? Come on, people. Removing the pants, drafting Trey Lance, going to the big dance, book it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You threw a bucket in there. Uh so Trey because Lance is your pick. Come on, like Trey Lance, uh, we had like just a couple games of him last year. One of them, he was a top ten quarterback. Uh, I believe in that game he also had a rushing touchdown that was just called back and had that not been called back on a silly penalty, he would have been even higher. He just He's surrounded by weapons. He's going to run. He's going to vulture so many rushing touchdowns. He is allegedly ready, uh, <laughs> uh, according to the latest reports out of San Francisco. With all the song and the dance, at, Jimmy Garoppolo will be traded he, or, or cut. He won't be on the San Francisco 49ers, and Trey Lance will get his shot. So you're taking a chance. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, he was number 10 during the week where he was a top 10 quarterback, just for the record. 10 on the dot. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's, that's a nice – I mean, we would do that, right? If we finished in the top 10, we'd say yeah. – Yeah. Like, you finished top three right. in yeah. your tournament. Congratulations, Andy. Yeah, I got you. Um, yeah, I, I, I'll i take uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, quarterback for the Panthers. Um, <laughs> I bet you won't. No, I, I, I won't. Um, actually, the, uh, the the pick that I wanted to make, uh, I will wait for you, Andy, because okay, you sure. had it in the dock first. But I'm going to throw Tua out there because yeah, it makes he sense. is a name to at least monitor going into this year. You've got the weapons. You add Tyree Kill. You get an offensive-minded head coach in there. You've got Waddle in his second year. I've never been a huge Tua believer or supporter, but you you have to open your eyes. And you, know, you can't just have take lock if – everything around him is set up to succeed, there is a chance that he has a lot of fantasy relevance. So he, he's someone to monitor outside those top 12 guys that, that could really level up this year. Send in the car. Send in the car. Yeah, Derek Carr is hey. the pick for me with Devontae Adams coming into town, already also being, makes sense. being steady, productive. He won a lot of games for them down the stretch. I don't know if it'll happen, but it's nice that he has – another option around the end zone, right? The, those touchdown totals can go up a division. We've said it almost ad nauseum, but a division that a lot of points are going to get scored with Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, and Justin Herbert, the other three in your, in your division. So uh, they're going to have to trust the new passing game in, uh, and Josh McDaniels offense in Las Vegas. And, you know, Hunter Renfro, Devonte Adams, uh, Darren Waller, who is not being traded uh, those are right. those are some great weapons, and that's what it's all about. It's so wild for Derek Carr to have forty eight hundred passing yards, that's so many, and finish as the quarterback thirteen. I mean, Derek Carr has never finished in the top twelve, so I could know. this be the year? I believe he was on pace to do that the season he was an MVP candidate, but got injured. Mm -hmm. And I believe he did not have Devonte Adams then. Yeah, so uh, it, it, is, out. it is still a, a risk. I, I'm not saying it's not, but it kind of feels like he's in the Stafford category to me, to be honest. And I think Stafford, was he 12 on our on, on our list yesterday? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I mean, that's I have those yeah, guys neck similar. and neck, probably 13, 12. Um, Derek Carr will have the opportunity to do something special, so you should – Pay attention because he will not cost you much. Yeah, and I don't hate playing the market of the Stafford and Carr of if their range of outcomes is. I guess Stafford is, is a little higher in the probability since he, you know, just did it. But they're, I think they're pretty close. So I would take the free Derek Carr over the paying up for Stafford. All right. 
news and notes from around the league. Well, yeah, yeah Jason, baby. <laughs> Jason Moore made this happen. Melvin Gordon has signed a one-year contract with the team he was already on, the Broncos. Worth up to $5 million. Gordon goes back. There were rumors about the Ravens. <laughs> Javante Williams will suffer due to this move. Melvin Gordon is a veteran. He is very trusted by this team. Russell Wilson will like him in the passing game. They're back, man. Didn't Melvin play with Russ in college? Am I remembering that? In well? Wisconsin. I think that is correct. Yeah, no, that yeah. makes sense. So um, We're back, baby. You know, the, the, the offensive coordinator came out and said, look, they're going to be a one-two punch. I mean, I, I've heard <laughs> – it's so funny because most of Twitter reacted with groans, and, and yes. that's how fantasy football is. It's better for the Broncos to have Melvin Gordon. Agreed. And, you know, there were people trying to make the argument to spin it as positively as possible. This is going to be the new – the chubb Kareem Hunt universe. Well, that, that's that might be true. But that's not what you really wanted, right? You wanted top five potential from Javante Williams, and that's gone. I mean, it's it's really gone, right? I mean, Melvin yes. Gordon had how many touchdowns this year? Eight, two hundred. They both had two hundred and three carries. He had eight touchdowns on the ground, caught twenty eight passes, and so even if Javante is number one of that one two punch, Jason, the ceiling has changed. It's been lowered. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, you cannot just be so caught up in the desire for Javante Williams to get all the work and be fantasy gold to remove you from rea the reality that Melvin Gordon and Javante were an awesome tag team last year. Their, their rushing together Mel was, oh, it was a real just, whoop. There it is. Yeah. I mean, it was fantastic. So I, I think this is great for the Broncos. Um, good for, you know, Russell Wilson and the the offense is just bad for Javante, who I I'm as of this moment is really really early, but I assume Javante is going to be over drafted because there was the long period of time where we were putting him you know at running back five or right around there, and now he's going to come down, but I don't think he's going to come down appropriately. He's going to people are going to make the narrative of well he's going to be the leader because he's better and Gordon will just do the mop up duty but in reality I think it's going to be why why would you not continue to do what was awesome last year it Melvin is, Gordon is 29 it is it a new coaching staff so yeah. that could be a reason that they they do change it up a little bit and I get the upside of Williams is it's there like should Melvin Gordon miss time but I you're I think you're right, Jay. You got to see what the market does in the ADP because it. I don't think it drops low enough. Can I bring up one uh, situation here? Let's sure. say let's. You've got an offense you like, right? We like Denver's offense now yes. with Russell Wilson. You have a backfield that's a committee. Do you like Javante right now more than you like Antonio Gibson? Because I think we mm. would view Melvin Gordon a slightly larger committee back than um, J.D. McKissick, but the offense is better, right? Total touchdowns probably going to be right. higher. So who do you like more between Javante and Gibson? Now that Gordon is there personally, I'm going to go with Antonio Gibson. I mean, this is a guy who, I don't know, he's just been a top 12 running back his only two years in the league, um, and I would imagine he gets more work, more opportunity on a worse offense, but I would expect him to be another top 12 back. And I feel more confident that Gibson's lock on the, the goal line role, it was, like, you're not putting J.D. McKissick on the goal line. Yeah, so that will be Antonio Gibson where Melvin and Javante could split. And that will be – those will be <laughs> infuriating weeks. Now – I'm just going to throw this out there. Okay. We are very we're in the analytics and the stats and those things matter, right? So, the one time that they played together in college, Melvin Gordon only had 20 yards. So, what are the odds mm. that he only has 20 yards this year based on, you know, the trend, math. the trend and the Science. math. Man, I I've not considered that. Right. Well, thank I you. Mean, that's the, <laughs> thank you, Andrew. Uh, Monty Ball <laughs> had 1923 yards that year. Melvin Gordon had 20. What mm. a loser. So, oh, the the great Monty Ball back in 2011 in Wisconsin. Oh man, so you were right. They played together one year. Incredible memory. And Ball and Melvin Gordon, now legendary Broncos. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh, that's a good one. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. One more bit of news. TJ Hawkinson's fifth year option. It's been exercised by the Lions. Mm -hmm. So uh, hockey leaves, the hawk strap, whatever you get every single week. It's coming back to Detroit. They've got some draft capital, and uh, they're going to try to make a move with uh, Mr. Dan Campbell at the helm. You guys ready to do some predictions? Mm -hmm. Let's go. I want to play a game. I really thought we had a draft predictions drop. I didn't realize we, were, we had to play a game drop. But we are playing a game because one of us, it's a game not to lose. Right. I mean, I'd like to get them all right, and obviously I probably will, but I'd rather not get them all wrong and be at the bottom of this list, and I'd rather Mike have to take another yeah. picture. Oh, I don't mind. Right. I, I mean, He's got them. He's got them waiting. <laughs> I'll probably do Like I imagine I'm going to get first in this particular competition. And I'll, I'll throw one up anyways. Yeah, you just volunteer as yeah. tribute. Uh, Andy, you won't get and them I'll all. I'll throw up when I see it. You you <laughs> won't get them all right this year because, <laughs> because nobody. <laughs> this is an insane year. Like last year, I felt really, really dialed in. A lot, you know, that was the consensus. I I did great, you know, other than switching uh, Mac Jones and, and uh, Justin Fields' destination. I got most of them right. This year, I'm like. You can just flip a coin for almost all of these wide receivers in what order they're going to go. You know the teams, but it's just this feels wild this year, especially with the lack of clarity at quarterbacks, but we'll see who wins. All right, Jason did have the highest percentage last year. I'm not sure it entered the most of them right category. But most of our picks, right? You were the best amongst us, but you probably were well below 50%. Okay. So most of them right would have been like like if you brought your test home to your from the teacher right. and you said, "Hey mom, I got most of them right." And it said like 47% on there. Mm -hmm. And you say, "How but, would your what how would your mom But the other kids failed worse than me." No, That's I, what you I would say that. No. Great on a curve. No, exactly right. We grade uh, on a curve here. I was a so top 10 quarterback that a week. Plus. You did start 6 for 6? Is that true? Yes, that's true. Yeah. I'm telling you. I rocked it. This guy over here. Six, that's 100%. <laughs> Yeah, until you started missing them. Well, sure, I missed a few. I told you, I got I got Mac Jones going to the Kyle, Bears. Kyle, don't you have these numbers? Justin I mean, Fields. aren't you guys prepared back there in the ball pit? I can look, but Jason, that was insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. good. That's good. Um, how did he start six for six if Justin Fields went that high? How is that possible? Did you have Justin Fields right? No, I had Justin oh. Fields to the Patriots and uh, and the opposite, Mac Jones to the Bears. Weird. Okay. Uh, let's start with Malik Willis. Where's it going? Uh, well, coming out of uh, Liberty Biberty, <laughs> I <laughs> his his. Uh, How did that work? I don't know. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> his uh, his we're we're mentioning him in right. the order of where they're handicapped to go the highest. So right now, DK has Malik Willis going around pick thirteen and a half. That's the highest projected quarterback right now. So, Mike, where do you have him going? I believe when the draft, when the clock starts, teams will like the, the quarterback strategy will be revealed, and quarterbacks always go very high. They'll in the draft. all go higher. <laughs> yeah, and I have Malik Willis falling to number nine to the Seattle Seahawks as uh, I. Pete Carroll, I as much as he gets on my nerves, and because he's you know a division rival. I think he's wise, and he's. I don't see him entering the year with just Drew Locke and Geno Smith without some type of future backup plan. Yeah, I, I have him going to Seattle as well. I had him at Pittsburgh, uh, which I think is, man, it feels it feels really likely that he could get there. Um, but listening to some of the beat reporters from the Seattle area, their focus on quarterback, and you're you're sitting there at number nine, the pick that you got for trading Russell Wilson, and you don't have a quarterback. If they believe in Malik Willis, who has some of those similar skill sets, can right. can be mobile, has a big arm, um, they'll have a chance to grab their quarterback right there. So I, I switched up to Seattle. I did go with Pittsburgh. I think that there's a chance that 20 is, is where Malik Willis ends up. Uh, I definitely think that uh, Kenny Pickett is going to jump him in the draft. So I went with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm live. I, I I'm all alone. I mean, but, but I think that's the that's the quarterback that they have their eyes on. 
it, the hard part of not putting him in with Pittsburgh is just like Najee last year. It was like that was one of the picks where all the consensus, everything was just locked in. If Najee Harris drops to the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're going to take him. And Malik Willis has, in this crazy mock draft season, has been firmly linked to the Steelers. Kenny Pickett is projected to go around the 16th pick in the draft. I see that uh, we have at least two of us that have yeah. an agreed destination. I have Carolina as the home for Kenny Pickett. They cannot. I, I think he goes at number six. I think Kenny Pickett goes at number six to the Panthers. I think you're insane. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo will be their quarterback. I've got him going to Pittsburgh uh, where he played college ball. So the kind of hometown hero right. sure. uh, being drafted there. If Malik Willis does indeed go to Seattle, then he's the next best quarterback available. And I may or may not have uh, a ticket on – I didn't mean to rhyme that – but a ticket on Kenny Pickett being drafted by Carolina that will uh, make me some cash. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going with Kenny Pickett to Carolina, baby. Now, you think it'll be at six or a trade yeah. back? Or? I think if I, you don't mess around with a quarterback. You take him at six. Desmond Ritter, who stumbled his way all the way up uh, to some mock drafts in the top ten – but I – That feels like a really accurate way to say that. Stumbling up? Yeah. yeah like I mean, he's, he's just not good or I, – I Do you guys like Ritter? I think he's okay. I don't – I'm not sure that there's a huge difference in projected upside between Ritter and Willis. So in that regard, I think that they, both of them have – The uh, ability to fail. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. They have wide range of outcomes. They could both be uh, pretty special if things went the right way, right team. Now, I got in, and I put all my picks in before I saw any of yours. So this is the first time I'm seeing any of the destinations that you guys have selected. I went with the Lions, and you both went with the Lions yep. Yep. at but the end of the first round? This is our discrepancy. Or the beginning of the so this, second round. This is where we can have the tiebreaker. Since we all have Desmond Ritter going to the Detroit Lions, I think they, they take him as the final pick in the, the end of round one. You secure that fifth-year option. You don't screw around with uh, uh, heading into day two, give a bunch of teams time to regroup, possibly trade up, and risk that he will fall to 34. So I think they take him at 32. Which is very logical. I think that they're fine not even having a quarterback in this draft and just rolling with Jared Goff. So I think they, if there's a player at 32 they like, they'll wait and take him at 34 a couple picks later and sacrifice that fifth-year so option. So you want in on 32 or 34? I'm first round. Okay, okay. so 32. It's just a tiebreaker. Tie yeah, it's a tiebreaker. It's a tiebreaker in the event of like all uh, the picks yes. at the end. You're yes. not just counting that as a win. No. Okay. No. He goes at either of those. We both win until we need to tie. Okay, so we have – those are the three quarterbacks that we're going to make predictions for. And uh, before we get into the running backs and a long list of wide receivers – Let's take a quick break. <laughs> quick break is over. <laughs> We're going to predict the destination for just two of the running backs. Mm -hmm. The All only right. two that, yeah. the only two that will probably go in the top. 60 picks. I just don't agree with you on that. I just you, don't. You think Spiller will I think be a Isaiah Spiller pick? absolutely will. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Uh, Brees, and, and I'm not alone in that. Okay. Uh, Brees Hall, I have going to the Jets, and I see you both have him going to the Jets. They That's have true. pick 35 and 38. 38 in the second round. That just seems like. Uh, a potential home. Now, there's. I know there's a lot of people who believe Kenneth Walker could go higher than him. I yeah. definitely see that as a possibility. They're 10 picks apart right now in terms of the over-under on the DK Sportsbook. Brees at 37 and Kenneth Walker at 47. Yeah, we. I, I went in and made a mock draft uh, separately, so I didn't, I didn't see your picks before I put them in, but it just makes sense. With both the running back positions, I feel like you need to be a team that has like extra draft capital where you're not burning a second round pick, but just using an extra one. So I, I've got both that that situation for both these guys. Yeah, I really I wanted to put Brees to Seattle because uh, they have you know the, look they what where are they in round two forty They're, and forty one yeah so they have the two picks but it's after the two Jets picks and I just they 
they're uh, they're high T up there. I feel like they're willing to to go a second are round you on talk, running back. You talking about the Seahawks? The Jet? No, the Jets gotcha. are uh, with with their uh, with Coach Sala up there doing a uh, taking a running back in the second. Yeah, round. I really wanted to put him to Buffalo and just speak that into existence. I just didn't believe it would happen. <laughs> I am just not as excited at the prospect of one of these youngsters going to Buffalo as you guys are. Oh, no, I'm not. I think it's fine-ish. Okay. So let's move on then to one that we all have different picks on. This is my, I think, favorite prediction in the draft, which is Kenneth Walker to the Seattle Seahawks. I think this. I think they're taking a running back. I think Chris Carson's career could be over. I think Chris Carson could be considered yeah. in their mind – a luxury if he comes back, but unlikely to do so. And Rashad Penny by himself is not going to cut it for this Pete Carroll running offense. So I think Kenneth Walker, you know, his his pick spot is 47 and a half. That's the projection right now. I like him to go to the Seattle Seahawks. When I came in to put my pick, which was different, in this spot, and I saw Seattle for you. Yeah, I, I like it. I thought. Man, I like that pick. <laughs> so I am right there with you for everything you explained. I am going to the Texans. They have the extra capital. They have like Rex Burkhead right now. Um, and hey, they, hey, hey, take it easy. <laughs> yeah, why don't you say that a little more? You know, put they have Rex put Burkhead. Right, they have Rex Burkhead right Sexy now. Rexy. Sexy Rex. He's getting up there in age, and they might think, hey, you know, someday we'll need to replace him. Yeah, but yeah, the, the organization talks a lot about wanting to run the ball better, establish the run. So I think they're going to improve their offensive line and grab a running back. If Kenneth Walker's there, I think they'll pull the trigger. Yeah, I like I was saying, I was very uh, in consideration of putting Brees to the Seattle Seahawks. But this is where I'm going with Andy. What was you were talking about is I'm calling the upset. I'm going Kenneth Walker to Buffalo first round? in the first Woo! round as like he to me just he fits more of what they want. They I mean Singletary is still there to catch some passes. They I feel like they brought in Zach Moss to be a hammer, and he turned out to be more of a nail. So they're gonna get a true pure runner in Kenneth Walker, and. Screw up rookie drafts everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, because what if? Yep. That's, what if is a very powerful rookie draft mover. And so <laughs> so just, just even mentioning that this is a possibility of Kenneth in the first to the, the Buffalo Bills or oh, Brees in the second oh, to the man. Jets. What do you do? Oh, what man. do you do, Hot I Shot? I might go Kenneth Walker there. <laughs> I mean, it, I, when I saw Buffalo here, I thought you had him falling to Buffalo in the second. Nah, if they use man. a first – he'll be good all right you guys ready to turn the page to the long list of wide receivers this is where it's going to get very very interesting and this is where let's be honest winners yeah. and losers are made yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and the dominoes when when the draft comes tonight and it, as soon as you get one of these wrong yep it just cycles a uh you know a an order of operations that's going to completely make everything else all of your predictions impossible it's the worst. It's the worst when, when, when one <laughs> well of you guys gets it right and it eliminates the destination for one of my other picks. It's the absolute most difficult part of, and fun, fun to watch. Garrett Wilson, right now, look, there's, there's three wide receivers that are basically picked to go right together. And I think that's going to happen. I think the wide receiver run is going to be something that, that who's going to blink, right? Right. You know, you have Garrett Wilson – Drake London and Jamison Williams, 9.5, 10.5, 11.5 in terms of where they're projected to go. We'll start with Garrett Wilson. And this one was very difficult for me, but I just think you're going to have a Jalen Waddle type of surprise, and I think Garrett Wilson goes to the Jets. It, it certainly could happen. Uh, I have him going to the, the Manders, the Washington Manders, and that's – I'm basing that off of just my projection of they have Elijah Moore. They have a guy who's 5'10", 180 pounds, and Garrett Wilson's a little bit bigger than that, but like six foot, 188. I mean, they're similar archetypes of, of players, so I have the Jets bypassing him for a different player and then him falling to the Manders. I, I have that exact same logic, same, same reason, process. same thought process, all of that. I'm curious, Andy, when you've got Garrett Wilson going to the Jets – do you have that with their first pick at four or at ten? Because Atlanta's there at eight who could take a, a wide receiver. So do you have him as 
the first wide receiver or the tenth pick. I liked the luxury of both options, to be honest it, with it you, because nice. it was one of those things where yeah, it helps. Where like it's not like Jamison Williams could end up going higher than uh, than Garrett Wilson does, and if he goes where I have him going, then then he'll be uh, Garrett Wilson will be there at pick ten. But so we got the Jets, and then you guys both went with the Commanders for Garrett Wilson, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, then, and so that would be pick eleven. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Uh, look, he's from Ohio State. They they did well. They with, like uh, the number Terry, eleven with Terry McLaurin. <laughs> Uh, from you know, you put two Ohio State guys next sure. to each other. Uh, so they Drake London's the next guy we're talking about, and and Mike and I both have him going uh ahead of Garrett Wilson to the Jets. Yeah, I have him going at number ten, just getting a different archetype of wide receiver, someone who can be a real X. Uh, so just an inversion of I have Drake London going one spot in front of the Commanders to the New York Jets. So you both have – so so I have the Jets for Garrett Wilson. You both have the Commanders. Yes. You both have the Jets for Drake London. I have the Commanders for yep. Drake London, which would be at pick 11. And then we move on to Jamison Williams, and we all have him going to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's pick eight for the Atlanta Falcons, who must fix their entire Everything. receiving crew minus Kyle Pitts. And, and it would be a welcome sight to see what some believe – He's the best player in the draft in terms of the wide receiver position, Jamison Williams. Yeah, I, I'm really afraid that they might pull the trigger on Drake London, have like the, the, the two towers there with Pitts. Um, but Jamison Williams just fits, right? This is a team that's not going to be good this year. Jamison Williams that's isn't exactly coming. exactly why I put him there. It's, yeah. it, he's not going to help this team win necessarily this year if he's not ready to go at the beginning of the season. But long term, he's I think the best wide receiver in the draft. So just he's the first one I have coming off the board. Uh, I have Atlanta taking the first wide receiver. All right, next guy we'll make a prediction for Chris Olave out of Ohio State. Projected spot pick sixteen. Well, sixteen point five is the over under line. I have him going to the Green Bay Packers. Ooh. Green Bay Packers nice pause. at pick twenty two. You like that? I did. Yeah. Very dramatic. Uh, pick 22, I think Olave could slide a little bit if he doesn't kind of meet the, the right team. So uh, I did go back and forth here with a few, but I went with Green Bay. Jason, where do you have Olave well, that, landing? That would make me happy, even though it's not my pick, because I have a bet that he will <laughs> slips <laughs> below where I have him now picked. Um, but I think that the Saints, the trade up Ooh. to get the extra first rounder is because they need another offensive weapon. I think they need to retool their offense. And if Olave is there, if he gets past the Eagles um, at pick 19 or, or I'm sorry, pick 16, um, I, I think that's where they take him. But he will not get past the Eagles at pick 15. And that's where I have Olave landing They're The, they're, they got to do something. You can't just have Devonte Smith and Dallas Goddard. And that's your offense. So I'm, um, uh, taking the speedster out of Ohio. All righty. We'll move on to Traylon Burks out of Arkansas. Oh, I like it. It's a Andy, difficult one. Please, please be correct. Uh, I went with Arizona. Oh, please be correct. I at, would be very happy. Arizona at pick 23. Uh, the Cardinals are going to have to stare down that decision of, do you want somebody that's kind of um, a speedster, uh, a Christian Kirk replacement on the outside, or do you want to go somebody bigger, uh, a compliment for DeAndre Hopkins. Traylon Burks, I think, ends up their pick here at 23. Yeah, that w this is great because if I win, I'm going to be happy. And if Andy's picks come right, right. Th th then I'm going to be happy. So, um, Mike, don't win. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I've got him going to Green Bay, uh, having the very versatile usage of Traylon Burks. Um, they need a wide receiver, and this would be such a great destination for him. Yeah, I have him going to Green Bay as well. All right, we're moving on to Jahan Dotson. 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 We've got Dotson here. I've got him going to the Saints. I've Ooh. got Dotson going to the Saints. That that would be a – So at 19? Uh, yeah, at 19. Okay. That would yeah. be a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, and he's been rumored. I mean, he's been rumored to Arizona at 23. Um, but I, I just think the speed, I think there's a chance he goes there. He's That would be a surprise because he's projected at pick 30. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, mine would be a uh, probably even a bigger surprise because I've got him falling um, second round ten spots from where his over under is right now to the Indianapolis Colts. I think that if they if he possibly got there, 
they would pull the trigger. They are in desperate need of wide receivers. It's just a matter of, can he fall that far? But he will not fall that far <laughs> because the Kansas City Chiefs have back-to-back -back picks. I'm not going to call my shot on 29 or 30, but one of those will be Jahan Dotson. And once again, rookie drafts will be completely messed up as you try and figure out how to navigate the what you think is the better wide receiver versus the guy who ends up with Patrick Mahomes. All right, your namesake, Jason. Sky Moore, where is he going? I've got him going to the Eagles. Mike outlaid the, the needs that they have. Uh, I think that, that Wait, so you're calling for Sky in the first? Or I, down at 51? Uh, I'm calling for Sky at 51. Okay. Uh, I have the Tennessee Titans as the destination for Sky Moore. Uh, he's projected at 35.5. Uh, this would be one of the surprise picks of the first round. And I've got him dropping down into the second. I, I like Sky Moore. He's very interesting. I got him going to the Colts who need some wide receiver help. And uh, Sky doesn't project to me, at least as the the solution on the outside. But you have Michael Pittman to be that person and then have Sky Moore replace T.Y. Hilton. What's interesting is I think if you do have a very early wide receiver run in this draft tonight, you're going to have some of these names that maybe it's going to be tempting to sneak up there. Like if you if you project yes, if yeah. you project every team that actually needs a wide receiver to take these guys in the order that they exist, you end up with Green Bay or Tennessee, Green Bay, Kansas City, and maybe even Detroit that all could use a wide receiver. Everybody needs wide receivers. And and so you're either going to have some some trade up fighting in the beginning of the second round or you're going to have some first round surprises. George Pickens, lots of opinions about him. You brought up Jahan Dotson to the Chiefs. I think he's gone by then, so I'm going with George Pickens to one of the two Chiefs picks in the first round, surprising the world. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. I love George Pickens. This is my favorite pick. I I would not favorite be favorite Pickens. Yeah, this is my favorite Pickens. This is why I think that uh, the Lions might wait till 34. Because if George Pickens is there at 32, I think the Lions grab him. Have you seen this dude block? He, I mean, this guy, when he's out there blocking. He'll just he, Pickens up a guy and, like, throw him. Oh, that's oh, basically we're, what We're going to keep it going. Um, so <laughs> I, I think he's got that kneecap-biting mentality that Dan Campbell uh, would love. They need a wide receiver. So Pickens to the Lions. And I've got him being selected by Houston at 37. All right, and then I went with uh, Christian Watson being one of the wide receivers to drop a little further, uh, but not that far. I mean, 34, second-round pick to the Lions. Yeah, and we've all got someone going to the Chiefs. I think they look for speed, and you don't get much faster than Christian Watson. And this this one I'm not – like I'm not, I don't feel the real confidence in it. It just makes sense to me of – he, I don't think Christian Watson should be a first-round wide receiver with his production profile out of a small school. When you're, you can go to a small school, but you have to dominate. And I just don't believe Watson dominated enough for me to be a first-round selection. But I got him being selected early in the second by the Chicago Bears, who need a lot of help everywhere. But they really, really need a wide receiver. You have uh, they have two second-round picks, so he he doesn't have to be their first one, right? And I mean, you have Darnell Mooney, and then you have your acquisition of Pringle, and he's already in trouble, and it wasn't like a big-time splash anyways. You have to do something for Justin Fields and get him some support. Even though I know you're not playing for this year, you got to have something that doesn't just shatter the confidence of Fields. Oh, man, this, this is really upsetting me. As we go through this and we say the logic, Mike, you and I have shared a lot of logic. Sure. But as I look at these picks, I, I got to be honest. I, I think Andy's going to win this. I, the, this pick here, I loved. I just talked up my pick of Pickens because he's such a crazy blocker. But I believe the Lions uh, were one of the teams at the Senior Bowl, right? Their, their staff was running the Senior Bowl, where Christian Watson was the talk of town and dominated. And Andy... I love your pick. Sure. Can we count it as a like I got it right right now based on that praise? You get an attaboy. Yeah. yeah, attaboy. All right. We got one more pick we want to make, <laughs> and that is the uh, the tight end, Trey McBride, who I actually have going to Tampa Bay. I love it. Yeah, so, it, makes, it makes sense. Uh, I like that pick. I hate Jason's pick. <laughs> I take great offense. Yeah, because – Of course uh, you do. Because you're fish man. Yes. Uh, Adam Troutman and the Saints, they need another weapon. 
they're retooling their offense. I think Trey McBride is a very good prospect. It's, he is. End. I think he's a great prospect. It would just be really weird to spend a second round pick on your backup tight end. Uh, mm. If so, if Trey McBride went to the Saints, they need oh, to find their Dalton wait, wait, Schultz. Wait. They need to find their Dalton Schultz to their. So real quick, so it'd be weird to to spend a second on their their backup tight end. Yeah. Where do you have him going? I am going to Kansas City. <laughs> okay, so he's going to be the because starter there, right? No, but I mean, like, the future. They, Travis Kelsey will have to be replaced at some point. And Trey McBride, he's got a little bit of that going on. And you have uh, Kansas City here with a couple picks in the second. So I think it's a little bit more of a luxury that you can have a guy waiting. No, I, I, I really liked your pick when I saw that. All right, so that is going to do it for the predictions. The draft is this evening. And before the draft, you can come and hang out with us on Spotify Live at 7 p.m. Eastern, one hour before the draft. Come and join us. Spotify Live. You can grab the Spotify Live app, or if you're already listening on Spotify, if you go to the Fantasy Footballers on the Spotify app, it'll say right on there, upcoming live event. So when we're doing these live events, you'll be able to see it in there. Make sure you follow us so you're notified when we're going live. And uh, it's going to be so much fun. I cannot yes. wait. Uh, for this evening. You guys want to do a couple mailbag questions? Sure. Mailbag. Mailbag. What's the draft? <laughs> okay. Uh, I liked it. I liked it. Um, all right. We have a draft day question from Instagram. Do the Bills target a running back? That was the question. Yes. I think it's no. I'm going to go no. <laughs> I do think they target a running back. I do. I don't know whether or not you know the the draft falls that way, but they're not going with just Devin Singletary and I think they've given up on Zach Moss. All right, we have a uh They do have a what a Duke Johnson. Oh, yes. He's up there too. The Duke. Instagram question from uh Devicto878 is landing spot more important than the player? Mm. The age-old question. Ah, yeah. Um, we talk a lot I about, in fantasy football, opportunity mattering more than talent. And and that is true for redraft. For redraft, your opportunity, it doesn't matter how talented you are if you're not going to touch the ball. And likewise, it kind of doesn't matter how untalented you are if you're going to touch it a lot. However, when you're looking at this through the lens of a dynasty outlook, I, I think that we can't overreact to landing spots because things change so well, quickly. You, in the you NFL. end up with Jalen Waddle being doubted in dynasty yeah. drafts. You end up with uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire being drafted ahead of Jonathan Taylor in dynasty drafts. You end up with James Robinson being ignored. You know, there there are a lot of situations where skill is going to win out because unless it's a a situation that you just you just don't see any path forward for them for a long time. Like it's not going to be easy to say skill matters the most if a running back lands in Tennessee and you're just kind of like, right. well, skill doesn't. It, your skill's not winning out over him. He's going to have to break down first. Derek Henry, I'm speaking of. So there are some. I think on the extremes. Yeah, I'm worried about the landing spots. Like I was, I was, I allowed Rashad Bateman's landing spot to actually affect because I long term Lamar is the quarterback it didn't seem like a huge pie and so it was a small sliver so he moved down for me but, but in general I try to keep the talent um right there with the landing spot in dynasty if you want I know we didn't project it but 57 to Buffalo I think that could be a home for Isaiah Spiller could be. if those other guys go much earlier um running back needy teams of that nature uh we'll see all right, that is going to do it for today's episode. Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow us on social media, you can also do so. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers because we will be doing a live event on YouTube on Friday before the second round, talking about all these first round picks, bragging about the ones we got right, forgetting the ones we got wrong. Oh, totally. And well, um, if you get it wrong in the first round, you could still you, you can still, you can it still right. catch it in the second. That's right. We'll be talking about all the pathways to victory that we still have. So <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed today's show. Thank you for following and supporting us. You can check out our community at jointhefoot.com. Enjoy the draft. Join us on Spotify Live. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. 
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>